Hello and welcome to another edition of the Startup Operators Weekly Roundup. I'm Roshan Karyappa and I'm Gunjan and together we'll be bringing you the biggest developments from India startup ecosystem from the week that was. Awesome. What are we going to talk about this week, Gunjan? Well, uh, last week SEBI came down hard on finfluencers for spreading false information and manipulating some Long stocks. Do. Long yeah. Do. And apart from that, Meti also launched a new platform for uh, folks to address their grievances towards social media companies. Fascinating. Apart from that, Dipinder Goel has resigned from the board of uh, Urban Company since uh, Zomato has started folding into home services, home cooked meals, and, and other platforms. We'll be discussing that. Then Sequoia has launched its eighth cohort of the search program trying to give a push to early stage and growth stage startups. And Nexus Ventures has, has launched a new fund of $450 million to wow. again invest in early stage and growth stage companies in India. Awesome. So a lot of things to discuss, folks. Stay tuned. And folks, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please consider doing so, so that more people like you can discover our content. And also share this video with your friends who you think will like it. So Roshan, how was the week for you? The week has been awesome. I don't know if you guys noticed the flashing lights in the background. I think we should put out an epilepsy warning or something of that sort. Yeah, I mean, the the studio is getting slightly jazzed up now. Uh, hopefully, you know, with a little more budget, I mean, <laughs> we'll be able to up the production quality. Uh, it's a work in progress. But yeah, a lot of positive news this week. Uh, Foxconn is uh, setting up or considering setting up a plant here. They're spending about $700 million, which is uh, really not a lot from a Foxconn perspective. But uh, more importantly, they're creating about 1 lakh jobs, right? Uh, which is amazing. You know, we talk about how India skipped the whole manufacturing curve and just jumped right into services. Uh, and manufacturing is something that, you know, we really have to develop the skill set, right? Um, right now, 35-40% of our population is employed in agriculture. So we don't just need agri-reforms, agri we need manufacturing, we need services, we need all of those things to come together, all those cylinders to fire, as uh, my friend Nirav says, right? So I'm very excited about that. Great. Well, and I think just before we started shooting, you were talking about, you know, the way Reels and YouTube shots have taken over our mm. life, right? You don't know like where 30 minutes of your life has just gone by, yeah, right? Really. And while these Reels were mostly geared towards lifestyle, cosmetics and entertainment, recently there's been new category of Finfluencers that has come up, which are giving a lot of advice on which stocks to invest in, which stocks yeah. to sell. Right, and SEBI has started cracking down hard on them. So on last Thursday, SEBI has barred 45 entities, which include some names from Bollywood, from uh, trading in the securities market because they were manipulating the share prices of two companies by uploading YouTube videos. Uh, they were uploading videos to kind of influence people into buying stocks of two companies, which are Sadhna Broadcast Limited and Sharpline Broadcast Limited for lucrative returns. Now, how this usually works is by convincing people who really do not know much about financial product, because of course, it's big words, very technical. A lot of jargons. A lot of jargons. So people, I mean, and they're promoting us saying, hey, double your money in X days, <laughs> right? And to the moon. Yeah. And people are pumping money into the stock, which raises the share price. And these people who are manipulating them, they offload the stocks and get, gain a profit, right? And SEBI has decided they'll gonna crack down hard. But this opens up a question as to like, this opens up a debate between free speech as well as uh, propagating false information. So what's your take on that? See, no speech is absolute, right? There is nothing like free speech. Speech always comes with responsibility, right? There is this famous uh, quote by a judge who, in, I mean, an American judge who said, you know, what if you shout fire in a crowded theater, right? I mean, you do have to assume some amount of responsibility. And so I really expected the regulations to come sooner because all kinds of things were uh, happening on the influencer front, right? Uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, they definitely provide a lot of value. I think, uh, you know, for folks like me who is uh, who are uh, finance noobs, right? It is nice to understand some of these terms uh, uh, related to equities, investing, uh, and so on and so forth in a simple jargon-free language. But at the same time, right, I mean, I think they were also misusing the trust that some of the consumers and viewers had put in them. So, so it's uh, long due. And see, investing advice is regulated in India, right? You have to be a SEBI reg registered uh, advisor uh, to offer financial advice. Uh, but these folks were, you know, it was a jungle raj out there, right? I mean, you you had all kinds of advice. But I think some of the bigger folks, whether it is like, you know, Rachna Rana, this or, Pranjal Kamra, Rachna Rana. I think, you know, I've seen pretty much a lot of their content and they are fairly responsible, right? Because obviously they have a huge audience uh, and they're in it for the long term and so on, right? So, so this is, uh, this is long due. Yeah. 
Yeah, and these guys, I mean, just to understand the scale of how many people they're influencing, so just look at the number of subscribers they have on YouTube. Huge. Some of them are in like 4 million, 5 million. Dude, you should see some of these Telegram groups and everything. Yeah, they're I mean, insane. this is, so Sebi is right now cracking down on what's already out there. But there's so many of these internal WhatsApp and Telegram group groups which are for members only. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of, you know, information is peddled there as well. Yeah, it, it is, it is. I, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I just feel like investing is a long game, right? Uh, even if you don't really learn up all of the nuances, I mean, at least apply some basic principles and I'm sure there are more than enough courses out there that can guide you on those things. All these sort of fly-by-night operators just take advantage of your greed and uh, and this is just as old as time itself, uh, really. But let's take a step, let's zoom out a bit, right? And not look in terms of content creators, but in terms of platform itself, mm. right? Of course, we have heard a lot of stories of how social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram are kind of shaping up public opinion and influencing, directly impacting our lives by influencing us on who to even vote for, right? And not only in politics, if you look at how Facebook influenced people into believing that, hey, you know what? COVID vaccine is a way for the government to sterilize the population. <laughs> Right? And, not COVID. and like years back when polio vaccine was a way of sterilizing the population, right? So it's a hu huge spread of misinformation. So to crack down on this, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology of MIT of India has recently launched an online portal for users to appeal grievance redressals by social media companies. Now, of course, this is a huge step to promote transparency and accountability to these large enterprises. But what do you think social media will look like in 2025? Do you think there'll be more sense of parity in how information is shared and what we believe? Uh, well, social media and regulations, two words that are really, really complex when you put together, right? Because, uh, you know, it uh, ties back to what you asked earlier, which is about free speech and responsibility and all of that. But see, social media today is just more than the days of, hey, I just ate a sandwich or I just watched this movie, right? It is a critical and integral part of one's identity. There are all kinds of nuances associated with that. So you just spoke about misinformation. But what, what if, you know, there is an account that is uh, banned or deep platform for you know some opaque reason right as can as has happened you know routinely we've seen you know the twitter files and uh, all of the stuff that's happened since musk took over right uh, so i think these regulations uh, are necessary they're really complex so i mean good luck to whoever is drafting these regulations i hope that you know they're a lot more broad based and you know and leave scope for discussion uh, rather than you know very very minute and you know, govern like how many characters you're going to talk about, etc. Right. So, so this is a useful first step. And I really like that, you know, we're paying a lot more attention to tech regulation because it's really necessary. All right, let's talk about some startups now. So Zomato has really been innovating this past one month, right? Their stock prices have gone up 12.6%, which means the public is actually liking it. Uh, for example, Blinkit has started offering home chef services through a company called Chef Cut. Now, Dipinder Goel has re resigned from the board of Urban Company because uh, Blinkit itself has gone a foray into home services. And then all the global brokerages firm remains positive on Zomato's stock price and predicts that this will only go higher. So I think it's great that what started off as just a restaurant aggregator business is now diversifying and really becoming part of our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, they have to, right? I mean, they have to do all sorts of things to sort of justify the valuation and really hold the stock price. But but yeah, I mean, this is interesting. You know, this home chef services, are, are they, I mean, are they sending cooked meals or I mean, are they... No, uh, they're sending, sending a chef. chefs. Oh, they're sending, sending chefs? Chef, yeah. Wow, that's But really I think amazing. they're also um, working on another product called the Zomato Everyday, which aims to offer like home cooked meals for, you know, people like me have moved on from other cities to another place. Very interesting. Yeah, so I think this will awesome. see huge traction in places like Gurgaon, Bangalore, Chennai, yeah. Mumbai. Yeah, this whole thing is very fragmented, right? In terms of cooks and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, if they kind of streamline it, who knows? I mean, there is definitely a captive market. Okay, uh, so Sequoia uh, has this accelerator program called Surge, right? And they have had some... And through Surge program, they mentor early stage startups and also put in $1 million in, in investment to help these companies grow. Recently, they announced their eighth cohort. So right now, their community has grown to over 300 founders, 130 startups in 16 sectors. Right. And Sequoia Surge has produced notable companies like Bharat Pay, Dunzo, Khatabuk and Misho. We are in the eighth cohort. And in this cohort, there are some notable companies like ASAP, which is an Indian edtech platform, which provides career coaching to students. There is Gudangada, which is an Indonesian B2B e-commerce site that connects suppliers with small retailers. Then there's Haruka 
Edu, which is another Indonesian edtech company that offers online vocational courses. And lastly, there's OctoRocket, which is a Singapore platform that streamlines cross-border logistics for SMEs. So a lot of interesting startups from a wide variety of sectors. How do yeah. you see Surge actually contributing to kind of push the boundaries for innovation? So Surge is a fantastic initiative by Sequoia. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, they started this about eight years back. And every batch, every cohort seems to have, uh, you know, fascinating startups, right? You mentioned uh, Bharat Pay, Misho, Katabook, and so on. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this whole community has been awesome. They've been able to leverage uh, uh, Sequoia's institutional knowledge from having invested in, you know, some of the world's best startups over the last uh, maybe four or five decades now, right? So... Uh, it's great, man. Anything that improves the odds of success for startups, right, is is just a huge plus one. And uh, early stage is where startups need the most amount of help. So while it's true that startup investments in India has really declined in recent years, right? We have seen like post-COVID, there was a huge surge and then it kind of is hitting rock bottom. But then some early stage company will still require the funding right? because the founders are good, the ideas are good and they have huge scope for expansion. Towards this, Nexus Ventures Partners, Nexus Venture Partners has announced a new fund called the Sixth Fund and they have raised around $450 million for it. Now, with this, they'll be investing in early stage startups in sectors such as enterprise tech, consumer tech, fintech, and healthcare. They have a really strong record for investing in successful Indian startups, which includes the likes of Delivery and Academy, Postman. And they have, these are one of the handful of companies that generate. Yeah. Hasura the, as well. I Hasura think. as well. These are the handful of companies which really generate the maximum returns for a VC firm. But when do you think the large scale funding checks will be back? Uh, well, the check sizes are definitely getting larger, right? I mean, we did this uh, last uh, roundup as well. I mean, you're seeing 20 million, 30 million series A's right now. And look, Indian VCs are sitting on a lot of money right now. There's a lot of dry powder, but then it's not really being allocated because uh, people are just holding on, just, just waiting and watching, right? I mean, how the market turns out. But they will have to deploy sooner or later. That's what I've been saying for a while now. Uh, and you will see this money come into the market for sure, right? So Nexus has a great team. We've had uh, Samir Bridgevarma, who's the MD of uh, Nexus on the podcast. Uh, and he was kind enough to do the podcast <laughs> twice. twice. <laughs> <laughs> After the first one, uh, you know, was wrecked because of some recording uh, snafu, uh, right? And uh, we've also had Anandatta uh, on the podcast as well, who's a principal there. They've, you know, single-handedly, I think, encouraged and developed this developer tools market, right? Uh, Postman, Hasura, they have a good thesis on that. They have a good thing going there. Uh, so yeah, I mean, more money is always, you know, Welcome. <laughs> so a couple of weeks back, Ashni Grover on LinkedIn gave a sneak peek into his third unicorn, right? And given his stature and the sort of stories he's involved in, of course, this was supposed to garner a lot of media and public attention. Now, last week, he recently announced that his latest venture called uh, CrickPay, which is a cricket betting app, raised a seed fund of $3.5 million, which was led by ZNL Growth Fund, along with 28 other ventures and in angel investors. Now, if I were to just look at the timing of it, the IPL season will be starting soon, right? That means your online betting, your online fantasy games, demand is going to go up. And this also signals a growing online betting market within India. Yeah. So how do you think that's going to play up? And also, just one caveat here, we know Ashni Grover only speaks dhanda. So yeah. I'm sure there is some like merit into this. He's picked a very lucrative market, right? I mean, cricket and betting. I mean, there's a huge interest in both. We've seen how these uh, fantasy sports platforms have done. And, uh, you know, India has a huge, large monetizable internet, uh, right? And these sachet kind of services, uh, 5 rupees, 10 rupees, 50 rupees, 100 rupees, they work really well. So, yeah, third unicorn. I mean, that's a pretty interesting name, right? Kind of an odd uh, premonition also. Who knows, right? I mean, it might no, become no. the third uh, unicorn for him after Blinkit and Bharat Pay, yeah. All right, so moving on to our talk of the town section where uh, Roshan Patel, who is the co-founder of Walnut, has uh, put out a tweet saying that he created a fake LinkedIn profile of a founder where he used an AI-generated white male face. The person is an alum of Stripe. He's a Stanford dropout and is not currently going through Y Combinator. And also in his bio, he's written polymath, which means you're an expert in multiple subjects. Red flag. <laughs> Now, within 24 hours, he had a VC reach out to him saying that, hey, I'm interested in what you're building, would like to invest. I don't know why this is surprising to a lot of people, right? I mean, people were replying to this and even, you know, folks who are really experienced with startups and so on, right? I mean, yeah, VC is a hard game, man. I mean, it's a really, really hard game. There are very, very, very few fundable startups out there. And so if you are a VC or an analyst or whatever at one of these firms, 
you have to chase uh, the next big thing right uh, so yeah i mean it's nothing surprising here and early stage you have to bet on teams rather than ideas right i mean ideas tend to change and uh, ideas are only as good as execution and the best bet you have that the execution will work out is the caliber of the team right so someone has been to stanford someone who's a yc alum obviously the you know there's a certain credibility to them right? so yeah there's a certain pedigree to it so you can't ignore that uh, i i'll i mean I, i don't want to comment on the whole white male uh, thing right i mean i would definitely say in my opinion is that i mean if it was any other combination right in terms of gender and color with those credentials i think you know they would have equally seen a uh, you know someone reaching out to them right i mean let's see i mean maybe they should have it as that but <laughs> hopefully there are better things to do than that well also it's been a while since we had someone from the vc side in our podcast so yeah, whenever we I have i just realized that yeah. we should pro- perhaps have another investor on the podcast sometime yeah it would be interesting to like get his views on on this topic yeah it'll be interesting to get some perspectives on what it is like to invest in 2023 right how the markets are different how the game has changed and so on yeah yeah So yes with that we come to the end of this week's episode a lot has happened in the ecosystem yeah. uh, in the last 7 days and right? it's good to get back in the groove right yeah <laughs> <laughs> we had lesser cuts this time <laughs> well <laughs> no comments <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, if you like this episode, then again, don't forget to click on the like button and also subscribe to this channel. And if you really, really enjoyed this, then share this video with your startup friends. Uh, if do follow us on our social media accounts on Twitter, we are at Operator Startup, and on LinkedIn, we are the Startup Operator. And if you like updates delivered straight into your WhatsApp inbox, then you also find a WhatsApp link in the description below. Do let us know how you're performing in the comments section. And Roshan and I will look forward to meeting you again in the next week. See you guys, and also let us know if uh, you want us to have one or two of your favorite founders on the podcast. Uh, yeah, we'll reach out to them and make it happen. Thanks.